Welcome. Welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. Scandals plaguing the Democrats for months. This program has been shining a light on one particularly damning scandal involving the Clintons and the very sketchy sale of Uranium One. Last night, The Hills' John Solomon released a brand new report detailing that. Now, even Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein is seeking access to an informant who helped the FBI investigate a bribery case surrounding that Russian state energy comp uh, company. But Hillary Clinton wants you to think this scandal, it's much to do about nothing. Take a look at this. The Uranium One story has been debunked countless times uh, by members of the press, by independent experts. Uh, it is nothing but a, a, you know, a false charge that uh, the Trump administration is uh, trying to drum up. This is such an abuse of power, and it goes right at the rule of law. If they send a signal that we're going to be like some dictatorship, some authoritarian regime, where political opponents are going to be unfairly, uh, fraudulently investigated, uh, that rips at the fabric of the uh, contract we have that we can trust our justice system. In a radio interview early today, Hillary Clinton reiterated those comments and even called the Uranium One scandal a, quote, political stunt. Joining us now with reaction is the author of Clinton Cash from the Government Accountability Institute, Peter Schweitzer. Good evening, Peter. You know, when hey, Judge, book, great to see you. Good to see you as well. When your book first came out in 2015, you know, did, did you ever wonder why in 2015 there wasn't an automatic investigation, uh, you know, by Congress, uh, by the FBI, by the Justice Department? And because, Peter, when I read that book, you, we covered it here. I covered it on Justice. I mean, it was explosive. Your facts were uncontroverted. And yet Hillary Clinton says, you know, it was a false charge. It, it was, you know, it, it was uh, controversial converted by, you know, press reports. I mean, what was, the, what is she talking about? Yeah, it's, it's certainly not the way that I recall it. Um, look, uh, you know, the book came out in April of 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, the Uranium One story we shared before the book came public with the investigative unit at the New York Times. They ran a 4,000 word front page piece confirming the findings, the hidden donations, the, the, the CFIUS approval, the Clinton's connections to this drama. And really, after the book came out, Judge, the FBI did launch an investigation. Right. Uh, and they felt there was enough compelling evidence. This has been widely reported in The Wall Street Journal and, and other places. They felt there was enough evidence to uh, get the Department of Justice to grant them subpoena powers. And they were turned down by the Obama Justice Department. So, you know, her argument that this has been debunked, it hasn't been debunked. All the debunkers do, Judge, is they change the timeline or they exclude facts and they say the fact pattern doesn't work because they've excluded certain facts. And what I've said from the beginning, you and I've talked about it, yeah. you're a seasoned prosecutor, is look, you just need to investigate and find out what happened, and then you can figure out what crimes, if any, have been committed. And that's all we're calling for. You know, Peter, I, I have to commend you, because but for you, we wouldn't know about this. And, you know, um, on, on my show, Justice, one of the things that I did was I talked about the fact that uranium is an essential ingredient for Molly 99, which the law in this country requires that, you know, we make in this country, that we are are now shipping uranium out to other countries and then paying for it. It's an essential ingredient for nuclear medicine, for medical isotopes. It now makes sense to me that, you know, the Russians were in such a, a, a rush to buy it. But what do you think is going to happen? If this witness who was gagged and now Diane Feinstein wants to hear from this FBI informant and is now ungagged, what do you think we're going to hear from him? Well, I have to say up front, I have not met him. I don't know him. Uh, but what I understand by looking at legal documents involving his case, this guy was an insider's insider. Right. Uh, he was being paid by the Russian company $50,000 a month 
to serve as a lobbyist. And in the legal filings, what you find is his job was to basically carry the flag for this entity in Washington, D.C. And that job included setting up meetings with high ranking administration officials. This would have been the Obama administration, people on Capitol Hill and other elite influence uh, uh, you know, makers. Um, so he was working at a very, very high level. And what has leaked out um, seems to indicate he's got a lot of information that relates specifically to Uranium One. So it's going to be very exciting. And I think it's important to point out, Judge, also, remember, we already have a foreign government official saying that involving Uranium One, that, that, that he and his fellow uh, government employees were extorted by the Clintons, then Senator Hillary Clinton. Uh, this comes from the Kazakh uh, head of their atomic agency, saying that Senator Clinton refused to meet with Kazakh officials unless and until they granted uranium concessions to Frank Joustra, who ended up giving you know, more than $100 million to the Clinton Foundation. So we've got that testimony. We've got this new witness coming out. It's it's going to get very interesting here in the weeks ahead. Peter, were you ever afraid for your life as you were investigating this, as you as you were writing the book? Well, I'll, I'll just say this, Judge, in general terms, um, you know, we do take uh, and have taken security precautions. Um, we do face it in our organization um, cyber challenges on a regular basis. Um, you know, this is important stuff, and I think the more public it is, uh, the better it is for everybody who's investigating it, whether that's the informant or whether that's other journalists who are pursuing this story. Do you think that ultimately there will be justice in this case? You know, look, I think there should be. And I think right now, I think we take this step by step. And I remember you and I sat down in New York and had lunch and you taught, walked me through the, the process of prosecution. It's a step by step. First thing we need to do is gather all the information without having one subpoena, without having looked at any of Hillary's emails, while not yeah. looking at any personal communications. We already have the transference of money, that money being hidden not uh, publicized by the Clintons that they received this money at the time the deal was being approved. And we have uh, a, a witness, this foreign senior government official, and we now have this other informant. That's a lot of evidence without one subpoena, without any investigatory powers being well, used. So you know, let's gather all the do. information and find out what happened. All right, Peter, thanks so much.